Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Currently dealing with a pimple on my nose that's been there for about two weeks, maybe even more than that. I know, I think it's about two weeks. It's Saturday morning, hanging out with Okami here, watching some anime. Hey, girl, I actually need to take her out to go pee. So I thought I would help you guys out a little bit, give you some of my opinions on some of the higher yield things I believe you should acquire once you start working as a PA. And honestly, you could probably, no, you know, I changed my mind. You can 100%, what's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> You can 100% make this applicable to anyone's position, anyone's job. And so the most important things that I believe one should acquire once you finish school and start working is disability insurance. That is the first and foremost over anything and everything. I believe you need disability insurance. If you guys need a little bit of help regarding what disability insurance is, you can follow the White Coat Investor on Instagram or on YouTube. Sign up for his newsletter. He has essentially a boot camp that explains what disability insurance is. And he actually has a stepwise approach of what you should be doing once you actually start working. And the first thing that he has on his list is acquire disability insurance. So disability is not discriminative towards anyone. You can become disabled for anything and there goes your income. So I would highly recommend you guys do so. I found out that my job actually offers group disability insurance. And then I went ahead and purchased, or you know what, I actually haven't, but I'm in the process of purchasing, I'm back and forth with emails currently, with purchasing disability insurance privately on my own to cover a portion of that benefit. So that is the first thing that I would highly recommend you take advantage of. The second thing that I would highly recommend you do is to get life insurance. Now, a lot of employers will offer this through work, and that's great. And I, oftentimes, it's very inexpensive, if not free, maybe $5 a month or something. Most of the time, it's offered free, and it's usually a certain amount, not much. But I would highly recommend you guys get it privately. Get your own life insurance policy, and it's because... 10 years down the road, if you end up leaving this job for some reason and you forgot to acquire new life insurance from another employer, you now have this empty period in which you're not insured. And so Murphy's Law usually takes an effect in these situations and you're going to have life insurance. Then you end up moving to Michigan for a new job. You forget that you only had life insurance with the other company and no longer with this company. And in those six months of transition, you end up getting into a car accident, pass away, and you leave your family with nothing. So I would highly recommend you do not do that. Purchase your own life, life insurance policy. And if you follow a couple of people like Dave Ramsey, they'll recommend 10 times your income. Essentially, if someone depends on your income, you should 10 times it, which essentially will give them your salary for the next 10 years. I'm sure there's other ways of thought on that specific topic, but that's essentially what I did. So I took out a life insurance policy for what I believe is about 10 times worth of my income. I believe it costs me maybe $63 a month. It's fairly inexpensive, guys. And the reason I acquired that was one, before I met Holland, if something was to ever happen to me, my parents would have some money that would include my funeral, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I don't really plan on requiring too much money if I was to ever pass away. I hope they don't spend any amount of money, but it would give my parents something. And then once I met Holland and got engaged and we're getting ready to be married here, I have since switched over those beneficiaries to Holland and I've increased the limit significantly or the, the, uh, the life insurance policy payout. I've increased it significantly. And that way, if something happens to me, Holland's taken care of financially. So that is the second thing that I would highly recommend you guys do. The third is to find out if your company offers any 401k matching. 
Unfortunately, my company does not. They offer a 401k match after a year of working and then that match is discretionary. I don't really like that term. So Holland, I'm sure when she starts working, because I was a nurse as well, they do offer a company match. So we'll make sure that we max that out first. So I would highly recommend your third option. Figure out what your 401k plan is. If they offer a match, accept the match and do minimum the match. So the third thing I would recommend you guys do is just start investing for your retirement. Make sure that is covered. The first thing you're going to do is if a company is offering you a match, you're going to take the match. So if they offer, I don't know, 6% of your salary or if they offer up to 6% of your annual salary. Let's say your salary is $50,000 a year. So that matches what $3,000 a year. You could divide that by 12. How much ever that number is by 12. That's how much ever money you're going to actually put in and they're going to match it. So it's free money. Essentially, it's a part of your salary. So I would highly recommend you take advantage of that. Then once that is completed, then I want you to go move over to your Roth and I want you to max out your Roth IRA. Currently, I believe the maximum contributions per year is $6,500 which is roughly about $541 a month, give or take. So I would max that out. And after that, you can sort of do whatever it is you wish. It really depends on how much your saving rate is or how much your saving rate, what your saving rate is currently and what you want it to be in the future. So if you plan on saving 10% of your income, well then you find out what your income is, your household income that includes both yours and your wife's or only yours if you're the only one working. You times that by the percentage, you divide that by 12, and that's how much money you need to be investing per month. I would recommend for people that work in healthcare, you guys make a little bit more than your average person. So I would recommend anywhere between minimum 10% up to however much you want to do. I would say 10 to 15% is uh, somewhere in there. And if your income is a lot higher, you probably could do a lot more, maybe 20% of your income. But it really just depends on what kind of retirement you want. And if you're looking to be somewhere in the middle, maybe do 12% where you plan on having enough money in retirement, <clears throat> but not having too much money in retirement that you didn't live during out your youth. So really important. Those are the first three things I would recommend you guys do. Number one, acquire disability insurance. Number two, acquire life insurance. And number three, focus on your retirement. There are other things that I can put in this list, such as make sure making sure you have malpractice insurance, health insurance, dental insurance, vision, et cetera, et cetera. But those are the top three things that I would recommend you guys do because those are ones that are really important, especially when you're trying to build a family. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pretty laid back one. We're at seven minutes. So I'm going to finish talking here. We will see you guys in the next video.